All right, let's go ahead and finish our thought on this. So one of the reasons that I added these little bevels here is if you've just got um, vertical walls, the normal map is not going to pick it up as, as uh, easily. So it's always a good idea to uh, add stuff in so the normal map can, can see what's going on and, and how things are different. Uh, okay, let's see. I guess we can, maybe we can move this up a little bit. Tap the Y key, get this thing here. And then I'm going to hit solo and we can make this bottom area here just a little wider. Hopefully this is all looking pretty familiar at this point. So now we've just got some nice transitional forms in here that are and, you know, no holes or whatever. Okay, uh, so we're going to go ahead and look down at our geometry. Oh, I probably need to merge it all first. So let me do a merge down and a merge down. So now all this stuff is sitting here in one subtool. And I've got perspective turned off and I'm looking straight down at it. And I can come over and go to brush uh, and then create insert mesh brush. So we're basically just going to make a new one here. I could append it to my the one that I've got. Like the Z modeler has one. Um, so I guess you want to make sure that uh, in this case, if you've got the Z modeler brush selected, you probably don't want to hit append. Uh, but we can hit new here. If I'd had this brush selected, then I would have been able to append it. But it's not really like this one is, is not really worth keeping around. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to hop over to the new brush that we just made, which is this one here. And we're going to grab a, whatever, I'll hop back over here. And now we just need to set this up. So we'll go to our brush menu. Maybe not. Maybe I need to expand this. And now I can drag this over here. There we go. All right. So tools in here somewhere. At least it should have been. Oh, that was the tool menu. Lol. All right, brush, we'll go ahead and open this one and now I can just drag it. So I've got the tool menu over here, which is great. The brush menu over there, which is also great. Okay, let's go down to our depth and we'll we'll drop it. So you can notice that as we modify this, like what we've already added doesn't update. It's, uh, it's, it is forgotten uh, where it came from. So um, that's totally fine. Just FYI, okay, so I've uh, reduced my depth value here and so now I can basically, I, I do want to split most of the stuff off of it because I can't really see what's going on under here. I'm just going to split everything that's unmasked. And now I can isolate it. I'll hit solo real quick. So I'm going to leave this stuff where it is. I just want to pop this guy off. And they're all in one poly group. Because it got applied as an insert mesh brush, I think it's just making everything automatically one group. But it's easy enough. We can just hit auto groups here. And then I'm going to pop off the uh, negative shape here and we'll do a split hidden. And now I'm going to, this is a very important thing to mention. So this is low poly, right? Like that's very, very low poly. And this is high poly. What that means is if I try to do a Boolean operation, this is going to stay low poly. I need to subdivide this so that it fits in nicely with what's going on here. Like you can see this is faceting here. Like you would you would never want to actually even use something that's as low poly as this. Everything needs to be uh, extra special fancy. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to hit Control D a few times so that we get this looking nice and smooth. I'm going to set this to negative. I don't know if this is still Dynamesh. It is. Great. OK, so now we can just do a merge down. We'll hit OK. Calculate the Dynamesh. So that's been trimmed out. Looks very nice. Again, if you notice that your geometry here is faceted, it's because you didn't subdivide it prior to your Dynamesh operation. Very, very important. If I turn solo off, we have this stuff. It doesn't matter that this isn't subdivided because we can. We, it's a separate piece of geometry in its own subtool. But there you go. That's how you make this stuff where you get like a, uh, a custom. Let's see if I can actually shrink it down a little bit. You get your, your custom insert bolt sitting inside its uh, its shape that looks good and is, is uh, everything is aligned perfectly and nice and centered and you don't have to do any work. It's already sitting there. So that's how to make an insert mesh brush with some kind of fancy detail inside uh, for a fun little uh, tech detail. Make, make, make your mech stuff look even cooler and more Mickey. All right, one, one thing I forgot to tell you is how to save your brush. Right, so let's say we, we've got this brush and we love it, we want to keep it around. So you just go to your insert mesh and you go to save as. And then 
we're gonna need this probably to uh, you can kind of see what the what the path is. So we have this PC, uh, local program files, pixel logic. Most of the time, you're gonna have your install sitting right here. So you just go into whatever version of ZBrush you have, and then you go down to Z Startup, and then Brush Presets, and you just call it like my cool brush or whatever and uh, that's how you get it and then the next time you open up zbrush because you've saved it in your z startup uh, it will be located in here somewhere and then if you just want to you know give it a give it like credentials and stuff if you really want to i think that's in here somewhere anyway it's not really necessary if you're just going to hang on to it but if you're going to distribute it and uh, uh, you know you feel like you want people to know your name that's uh, in here somewhere. Doesn't really matter. Uh, mostly the thing that's important is is uh, so you know how to save your own brush. Okay, there you go.